So I think everyone expects me, expected me to stand here today, so this is this is an empty spot. So you're, you're, if you need to spread out a little bit, that, that's good and that's fine. Uh, first of all, I want to thank you for coming to this class. Uh, thank you for your interest in this topic. I believe that this topic is important. I think it's even <coughs> And uh, so I, I just want to, to thank you for coming. And I trust that the things that we talk about and the things that we say will be beneficial and will help you in your leadership responsibilities. And as we'll see as we go on, all of us have leadership responsibilities. And so I, I trust that you will be benefited by being here. Uh, can we bow for a word of prayer as we begin? Father, be with us this morning. Be with me as I uh, give this information, and uh, may I do it in a way that will be understood, and uh, people will be receptive, and we were those in this class that we will have open minds, open hearts, and receptive this to this topic. Be with us as we live from you for, uh, live with you for a day to, from day to day. It's our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. So, first of all. Uh, this, this is a, a new class, and uh, I'm going to have to get over here so I can see it. So this is, this is not the exact wording of the advertisement going into it, but it's spiritual leadership training. And I wanted to make sure we understood that this is for men and women because men and women are leaders. We're not going to be talking about adding uh, women elders to this church or deacons to this church or, men, or anything like that. But yet, women are leaders as well. Women are leaders in the home. Women are leaders in Bible classes. Women are leaders in their secular jobs or in various locations. And so we want to make. I just wanted to make sure that if, if you're here and aspiring to be a, a shepherd or a, or a deacon or, or something like that, that's great. Or if you just want to learn how to better lead. Or if you're just here just to listen and glean and take from what this class has to offer, then you're welcome to come and I appreciate you for being here. Now I want you to understand, this class is designed for developing leaders. And so I'm really, and I'm trying to advertise this, is this is a different class. So this class may not fit you. And if it doesn't fit you, and next Sunday you say, this, and I'm not trying to run you off, but on the other hand, if you decide, well, that's just not for me, you're not going to hurt my feelings. Because it's not going to be a typical class, and uh, it, uh, it, it, it's, you know, I want, I want feedback. I want you to interact with me. And when I talk about it's not it's not gonna be a passive class, but it's gonna be an active class. By passive, I mean by active, I'm not necessarily talking about a lot of interaction between you and me in this class. There's a large class here and and I have lots of information to give, and so I, I don't want to say it's a lecture class, because it's not, but it's not a total interactive discussion class. But I do want you to do some reading, so think about it, give some suggestions, make some input, have questions, send me questions by email or whatever, uh, because I want it to be a class that you and I go through together. So my goal is active participation. My goal is that we uh, are growing as a leader as we do this. So I may, I have a lot of material. I have material and on the, on the table in the back there's, there's handouts. There's about six different things, and I put it over there because if you're interested in it, you'll get it. And I don't want to pass it around if you're not interested. I'm okay with everybody getting one. I hope you do. But there are ten copies of two different ones, and if you, if, I only put ten because I think a lot of you probably will want it electronically if you want it. And so if you ask me, I will get it electronically to you. And there's about 30 copies of the rest of it. There's a lot of men and women in here, so just get one per family and, and or I can give those to you electronically as well. So one thing that, as I say this class, it's not about doctrine. Well, first of all, what is doctrine? What's the definition of doctrine? Practicing. Practicing, all right. What else? Somebody else. A definition of doctrine. What would you think? Essential beliefs. Essential beliefs. I would say what we believe. But you're right. Essential beliefs. And so this is essential. Doctrines are essential beliefs. And so this class is not going to be about 
Bible doctrine so much. Although we're going to apply it to what we do in the Bible, it's going to be about, it's going to still going to be about what we believe, but it's what we believe about leadership and ideas that we take from the secular world and how we can apply those ideas to the church and leaders in the church, whether we be Bible class teachers, leaders at home, or whatever, how, how we can apply these to the church in a biblical aspect. So it's, uh, it's, uh, it's, I think it's pertinent for us. It's still talking about uh, uh, things that's necessary for us, things that are good for us, but it's not doctrine the way we would think of doctrine generally in a type of exegesis or taking scripture and critical explanation of the scripture or interpretation of the text. That's not what this class is about. Uh, now, there's nothing wrong with doctrine. Doctrine's a good word. Uh, it's in Scripture. 1 Timothy three, or 6 and verse 3. If anyone teaches a different doctrine. Titus 1, verse 9, talking about elders. It says elders need to give instruction in sound doctrine. Or and then there's several Scriptures about doctrine in uh, uh, verses about doctrine in the Bible. So, doctrine is a good word. Uh, but we're, we're going to be talking about doctrine as it relates to uh, leadership traits. Now, one thing I want to emphasize, and I want to make sure we understand this, and I, I, I'm, I'm probably not going to say it every week, but I, I may. This class is not so you look and say, hmm, yeah, they're supposed to be a leader and they're not doing that. Huh, yeah, what, what about this? I, well, I'm, I know a congregation and their leaders don't, that, don't do that like that. It's not what this is about. And please, do not do that. Instead, what I want us to do is to take this and assess where I am. Not Jerry, you. Where I am in my application of these things. What I'm doing for a biblical pattern for Christian living. What I'm doing for characteristics for Christian living. What I'm doing for sound, logical thinking. And really, what I'm doing for me to improve. Because I think all, what we're all about is improving and growing and getting better uh, day by day. One other thing that I want to make sure you understand is this is Jerry's study. I'm not representing anybody. Uh, this is what I believe. These are things that I have learned over the years. And so this is me portraying to you my thoughts and my philosophy on leadership. One other thing that I want to get to before we get to uh, the lesson and in, in kind of where I'm going is I told you, and it's true, we're going to be talking about leaders from all aspects, but several times we're going to be going back to leaders in the church, meaning elders uh, specifically, also deacons, ministers maybe, but one of the things that hurts us, and this has been brought out before, this is nothing new I'm going to teach you, but I want to remind you of it, is the Bible is, when it was first in its original form, wasn't in chapters and verses, it was just a lot of words. In the 13th century it was divided into chapters and in the about 1560 it was divided into verses and that just helps us get around. But a lot of times what we don't talk about so much, which is very true and, and we need to understand it is that there are topics along in some paragraphs ahead of topics that talks about, hey this topic is about such and such. That's not original in the text. That is, whoever translated the Bible added that up there so that you would have a better understanding of what's coming. And I think one of the poorest things that they've done in that is say, in 1 Timothy chapter 3, they've got qualifications of elders. Or in Titus chapter 1, qualifications of elders. I think it's a bad word. And the reason I think it's a bad word is because qualifications is like a checklist. You go through there and you check, 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 got that. Oh, yeah, over here you got more checks. So you just add them together and you got one big list of checks. Well, that doesn't make sense. That's not the way you really contextually look at what's going on. So it would be better if we said qualities. Because, and the reason I talk about this now is because this entire class, this general class and the general way we're looking at this is we want to understand the qualities of people who are leaders, whether it be in the church or whether it be in the home and in your particular uh, life and what you're, you're doing in your life. Now, one of the reasons that I think this is important is because I read this, I think it's a good idea, is church leaders need to possess these qualities because all members, all Christians should possess all of these qualities with the exception of being uh, a father or and having children. You can be 
uh, a Christian without being a father. You can be a Christian without being a husband. So, but other than that, all Christians should possess these qualities, and the leaders maybe even to the uh, to the to the extreme. Uh, and, and so, I, I think that's that's a good point. Now, this is an outline of kind of where we're going. And by the way, on the board is an outline of where we're going today. Uh, we're going to talk series content, leadership, and then resources, and then that's that's kind of where we're going today. But where we're going to be going this in this series is. I'm going to spend for, for the first three weeks just on introduction. Uh, I have a lot to say, and uh, I just I can't get it all in in a week. So I'm, we're going to take the first three weeks. Let's break that down because I kind of know where I'm going on that. Today, we're just going to set the basis. We're just going to, to see where we get started. I'm going to throw out a lot of general things, and a lot of these things I'm going to talk about today, I'm going to try not to talk so fast, but a lot of the things I'm talking about today, we'll cover and we'll go back and cover again. Uh, then next week we're going to be talking about why leadership is so important and we're going to talk about things like conviction, culture, and construct. And then the third week in introduction we're going to talk about missions, goals, expectations. Uh, then we're going to spend a couple of weeks on growing, changing, acting, better, prioritized, value, attitude, and these. Then we're talking about teams, being part of a team. What I have classified now is week nine is biblical eldership. That's your traditional lesson on eldership. It's a good lesson, but that's not what this course in its entirety is about, but we will insert that in about there. Then in week 10, we may go into things like uh, theology, hermeneutics, and false doctrine, how you can identify false doctrine, what is false doctrine. And then chapter uh, week 11, conflict revolution, resolution and effective leadership traits. Now, what I will say is, this is not completely laid out, so I expect this class to run 10, 11, or 12 weeks. I'm going to try my best to make sure it doesn't go beyond 12 weeks because I'll be washed out by then. Uh, and you will too uh, for listening to it and uh, being a part of it. But that's kind of where we're going. So let's talk about leadership. So I spent years, three to five years, with this concept of teaching leadership. And then over uh, the last you know, six months or so, I've, I've tried to kind of finalize it and put it together. And I've read a lot. And I mean, I'm up to here on reading. And uh, so I, I really don't need any more. Uh, somebody gave me a book this morning. And I, you know, I don't even need any more because I'm so full. And Philip Wright comes up to me and he says, I've got this book on leadership that Dr. Thrasher gave me. It's going to come up here soon. It's not the first one. I go, yeah. So I went and looked at it and looked through it and I go, man, this is good. So I'm going to read it. And so I did read it. So I have lots of things, some things already in this lecture from, from that book. And then Tommy Gore, I was talking to him. And he says, yeah, I, got, I, I see what you're doing. He says, have you read uh, Leadership in the Kingdom by Ian Fair? He says, no. I says, don't know Ian Fair. So some of, the citation, some of the authors that I'm going to use is Ian Fair, Lynn Anderson, and Flavel Yinkley. And you may or may not recognize, but all of these are members of the church. Now, every author that I'm using is not members of the church, but these three are members of the church. And so, uh, Ian Fair is, is from Abilene, and he's, he's back in the 60s, 70s, and 80s, I think. And he wrote a book, Leadership in the Kingdom, and he said on page 94 in that book, organizations encrusted with a bureaucracy culture are doomed to fail in today's rapidly changing global society. Now, let's talk about three words there. Culture. What is culture? The way we do things around here. Exactly. Precisely. Culture is the way we do things around here. Let's go back and look at the word encrusted. What would you think encrusted means? Stuck. Stuck. Stale. Not going anywhere. Well, what about a bureaucracy? What's a bureaucracy? Red tape. Red tape. Give me, and, and you may come up with my first, what I think is the, the, uh, the highlight, the, the worst, uh, worst might not be a good word, but the, high, the, the greatest bureau, bureaucratic thing that we've got. What's a bureaucracy? Give me an example of an organization that's a bureaucracy. The IRS. IRS. I wouldn't even think about that one. Yeah, that is. What else? The government. Government. That's what I expected people to say. But I think there's one greater than that. Armed forces. Armed forces. A bureaucracy is a set of rules that's going to be total chaos if you don't follow it. 
And it's a chain of command. Boom, boom, boom. You've got to do it this way. You know. So it says that organizations, if they have this bureaucracy like this, is doomed in today's changing global society. And he also says, talked about transformational leadership. What's transform? What does that mean? Change. change. No, that's a bad word, right? We don't like the word change. That's, that's a bad word. We need to stay away from that, that word because that's bad. But does Scripture talk about change? Where? Give me, yeah, Romans what? Romans 12. Romans 12, verse 2. Well, in 1 and 2, but you go into 2. Be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed. So tra change is, is actually good. Now, there's, there's got to be direction to it. We'll talk about that. We, we, there's a whole lesson on change, so let's not go too deep on there, but change. A leader, a new leader, is one who commits people to action. A leader gets people active, gets people involved. If that's in your class, if that's in the church, if that's in your job, a leader gets people involved. He converts followers into leaders. Purpose of this class. I know I'm a follower, and I know I'm a leader to some point, but I want to be a leader even more. And how can I be a leader even more and do a better job of leading? And who may convert leaders into agents of change. I read a book not too long ago named Designed to Be. And uh, this book was by Geiger and Peck. And uh, it, it really highlights, uh, and it says, if your church is not developing leaders, then you're missing the boat. Uh, I want to play, I, I, there's, a, there's a few videos that I want to play today. We may not get them all. This is about a minute and a half, and uh, I want to listen, I want to just play this for a second. culture. What we're talking about is that not just the leaders have to have a passion for development, but it has to become part of the very DNA of the church to say, we reproduce leaders. That's what we do. And we don't do it, and we're not faithful. Uh, not enough. That begins to embrace foundational belief systems that say the church's job is to produce leaders. When the church doesn't believe that, when the church doesn't believe that, when you cut them, uh, then it really won't matter how often the leader wants to talk about it. It won't really matter uh, how many programs you develop. Now, what's going to matter at the end of the day is when the people of God, the, the, the actual covenanted people of God, the local expression, when they believe, when they buy into, when they embrace this reality that their job is not just to make sure that their kids follow Jesus. But their job is actually to make sure that there is a legacy of leaders that will continue after them long after all of us are been buried and taken home with Christ. And they begin to buy that as their legacy and as their as a foundational truth of what it means for them to be a local church. Uh, then you're going to have the kind of culture it takes to develop those leaders because everyone there believes in what you're doing. So that's really the concept of this class. Now, I already had this in mind, but when I when I looked at this and read this, uh, man, this really fits. And so uh, I have a summary of that book in in a hard copy. There are ten copies, or I can give it to you electronically if you're interested in it. But that's that's a good book and good thought uh, in leadership training. Have you seen them? Which way did they go? How fast were they going? How long ago? How many of them were there? I must find them and soon because I'm their leader. Well, that's kind of funny, but oftentimes it may be true, and we don't need to think of it that way, and we shouldn't look at it that way, but we should be leading when we are leaders. Now, this is the book that uh, Philip recommended to me, and MacArthur says that all Christians in every kind of leadership, whether it's church or business or work or whatever, are called to be spiritual leaders. And so, wherever you are, in the job that you're in or whatever you're doing, you're called to be spiritual leaders. And it says that people are looking for noble, trustworthy leaders who are going to take the ball and go and lead. And if godly men and women will pick up that and go, then people will follow the right kind of example. Lynn Anderson, uh, in the book Bay Smell Like Sheep, which is an excellent book, said something very similar. He says, Christian people everywhere are crying out for spiritual leadership. Is it easy? Not really. Is it challenging? Yes, it is. It is very challenging. 
Is it important? Absolutely. We're going to talk about that next week quite a bit. Is it a God-given ability or developed? And I say it's primarily developed. You may have abilities, but you still need to develop it, and that's kind of where we're going in, in what I want to talk about. Is it thankless? Sometimes. Is it thanked? Yeah. And it's appreciated when it's thanked. So that's just kind of what leadership is. I want to talk about some scenarios. So most of us in here have children and or grandchildren. And if you don't already know, I had 11 days dying, three or six grandchildren over the last uh, uh, week or so. And uh, if you have, you know, if, if your children are siblings, you know, how they get along, how they do things. But even for us, twins. And I know this is going to come as a shock to you, but we have twin grandsons who are strong-willed, strong-minded, and I want this, and I want that. And how do you deal with those things? How do you lead those people in the right direction and make sure there's peace and, and whatever? But you can even say the same thing about clients. Hey, I'm your client, and I want to be number one for you. You put me before everybody else. You have to deal with those type of things. Constituents, that's in the political realm. But even congregants, even members of the church, have things that they want, they desire, and lots of different good things, but sometimes you have to choose on which ones you do because it's not easy. You see, you see, there are different personalities and desires you got. My job as a leader, your job as a leader, is to bring all these together into one. There's another book that I read, it's Canoeing the Mountain. I have a summary of it also. It's about 35 page something, it's over there. And uh, this is about Lewis and Clark who are going on an expedition finding a route to the Pacific Ocean by water. And they got to a certain point point, they couldn't go any further. They had to toss their boats, canoes, and they had to change a whole different philosophy of way of looking at things. This was written pre-pandemic, by the way. So it's still applicable, but it's so applicable, applicable once the pandemic comes. So it doesn't mean we change the gospel. It doesn't mean we change the message. It doesn't mean a lot of things we change. But sometimes you change the, the method, the process, the way you go about doing things. And this is a really good picture, uh, a good book. You get a big picture, a big overview of it. So I've already mentioned this to you, so let's, let's go on. Uh, in this series, I want us to learn together. So what you need to understand is I am inadequate. When I go, I'm going to tell you, when I sat through the sermon this morning, I'm just thinking, wow, I'm glad we had this sermon this morning before the class because it really gave me some boost to, to get up and go. I wish I was a better orator. I wish I was a better speaker. I wish, but, but I am what I am. And I, 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 but even so, I'm inadequate. But my basis is Christ. My basis is not oratorical ability or intellect or credentials and I've had people say now these are my credentials and this is the reason you should listen to me. Well, I think we should be careful doing things like that because I am utterly dependent upon God and the abilities that God has given me. Paul said I didn't come to proclaim what with lofty wisdom and speech or whatever but just Jesus Christ and him crucified. Now he did in Philippians 3rd chapter talk about credentials. He did say you want credentials? Here's my credentials but you know what? They're all rubbish. They mean nothing. I press on. I'm inadequate. I press on. So I'm telling you this morning that I am inadequate, uh, but I'm in good company. That doesn't mean I'm equal to these. I'm not trying to say that whatsoever. But in the Scripture, people that are leaders are inadequate. But I am a student, or try to be. I am learning, and I am growing. At least that's what I'm trying to do. Furthermore, I'm filled with the Holy Spirit, and I'm passionate. About what I'm talking about. And I think you can manage to fit in those categories as well. And so because of that, I accept the opportunity to teach this class. So I, I, I want us to think that we're learning together. We're in here together learning and we're looking at things that have been talked about. Now, what I would like for you to do, and I don't want, to, I don't want anyone to feel imposition, and if you don't want to do this, that's fine, but I want feedback from you. If you will go to your device on graybeer.com forward leadership dash July 18th, or if you prefer to have a hard copy, I'll have a hard copy for you to fill out. But if you go on that and fill this out, there's a couple things, and I'm running behind, so I want to just ask you to do it as you go home. And when you go home, I would like for you to fill these in, and I'll have hard copies up here if you want them. But what I would like for you to do is, what do elders do? 
Just write down, what do elders do? Put your name, email, cell number, what do elders do? And then what is the scriptural function of elders and the shepherds? What I prefer that you not do is to go home and get your Bible out and say, I'm going to get all these answers correct. I just want to know what you think. And I'm not going to say, you know what Joe said? Sorry, Joe, it's just a common name. You know what Joe said? I'm not going to do that. But what I want us to do is see today our concept of what we think. And at the end of the class, at the end of the series, I want to come back and do something similar to this. And I hope we're going to see the growth from the beginning to the end. And that's really the purpose of it. And so... Uh, well, there's, I don't, maybe I got it later on, but in this survey, then there are things at the bottom that I want you to fill in also. What are my expectations? I forgot everything else is at the end, but what are my expectations? What do I want from this class? So I just want feedback from you. What could we have done better in this class? Uh, and, and various things like that. So if you will, feed that, uh, send that electronically, preferred, but if you want to do it hard copy or if you just don't want to participate, that's okay. It's not, it's not, you know, it's expectation. Now, one thing I want to do for next Sunday is uh, there's, there's, a, there's 50, there's rules, um, there's 50 rules for great leaders. And uh, I've got 10 of them up here. And this is also on that survey. And here's all 50 of them. There's a hard copy on that table. What I would like for you to do is to look at this, and this is in that survey that you fill in, and say, hey, number one and number seven, I want you to give me two. Number one and number seven are really good, and I really think they apply, and I, it's really strong for me. And Or you may even say, hey, I don't like those, and this is the reason I don't like them. I'd like for you to list your top two and say, and then yes or no, I'm willing to talk in class about that. <coughs> this is for men and women. If you come next Sunday and or you send it, I'll tell you ahead of time. I say, hey Andrew, you got number you got number seven because that's what you said you wanted. Give me 30 seconds to a minute because we don't want to take the whole class. So I'm going to try to do about three of them. My goal is to do this every Sunday, and so the first Sunday I'm going to take one of the top ten, uh, two or three of the top ten. The next Sunday I'm going to take the next 20, and so on and so on. So if you're willing to do that, fill that in on your survey and uh, and pass that in, please. So, the next thing I want to talk about is think critically. So, I want us to learn to think better. I, I shouldn't say you don't do it already, but better think critically. So, when I think about, well, first of all, power. If I want power, information is power. Knowledge is power. And so, for me to think things through clearly and to understand things clearly, then I have to be a critical thinker. I don't want to be like a mama bird who's just coming, dropping in. I don't want to be like this little bird that says, Mama, feed me. There's several pictures. They're all the same. Mama, feed me. Mama, feed me. You ever see anything like that in Scripture? The Scripture criticizes doing that. Where? If you're drinking milk, and there you should be. Exactly. Hebrews chapter 5 and chapter 6. You're drinking milk. And, you know, I can't even talk to you because you're just taking in all this milk. All you talk about is faith, and repentance, and baptism, and, and laying on of hands, and eternal judgment, and resurrection. That's all you're talking about. I can't even talk to you. You say, Jerry, that's pretty important what you just That's our core. He's not saying the core is not important. He's saying don't stop there. Dig deeper. Think critically. Don't just sit there and say, feed me, feed me, feed me. Where has this been done historically? in the religious world over over hundreds and hundreds of years. Dr. McClure did a great job talking about this uh, in the series that he talked about. Before Gutenberg, before Gutenberg, Gutenberg was a printing press. Before Gutenberg, then you had the Roman Catholic Church and state dominance, and they were feeding people. Here, this is what you need to know. Here, this is what you need to know. And, to the people's credit, they didn't have it written anywhere, and it was difficult for them to understand, and so they were falling off wrong. And Martin Luther and others came in and said, this is wrong. Now we have it, and we can read it, and this is wrong. And they started leading in the Reformation and went in a different, uh, uh, a different uh, direction. So I want us to think about it and say, let's not be guilty today of saying, here, I know the answer, I'm feeding you. You don't search what I'm talking about, but you just take it. 
That's what we need to be as leaders. Wherever we're a leader, that's the way we need to think and that's the way that we need to do. Robert Ingersoll was uh, one of the great agnostics, and, uh, but he did have this wise say. He says that uh, uh, regarding thinking, a man who cannot think is an idiot. A man who will not think is a fool. A man who dares not think is a slave. I think you could even take and change the word think to read. <laughs> the man who cannot read is, I would rather say, ignorant. That's just the definition of, of, of someone who can't read. A man who will not read is a fool, and the man who dares not read is a slave. So I think those are good thoughts, and uh, that just leads me into my next slide. So this slide is, the, uh, this is not all of the, the source resources that I use, but it's some of them. The two above I've already talked about. Uh, then leadership in the kingdom. They smell like sheep I've talked about. Uh, the next one is principle-centered leadership. Most everyone, uh, I'm assuming most everyone in here have seen uh, Covey's Seven Habits of Highly Effective People. But I tell you, that's not even the best book he wrote in my mind. It's good because it's the basis. It's where you start. But if you want to get deeper, principle-centered leadership. And as I look at my philosophy today and where I am, and I, and I go back and I look at where I came from, and I, I look at this book and I go, wow, now I know where I got my thinking because a lot of it is in this book. I had a book sitting on my shelf, good to great. Alan read it, told me it was good. I believe it's good. It's got a good name. And so I'm going to recommend it. I can't recommend a book I've never read. So I read it, and wow, it's so good. It is, it, 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 it's, don't just be good, be great. I want to be better. And we're going to talk about better. That's one of the topics going forward, be better. Uh, I don't have time to go through all these. But this is, starting at the top line up here, going down, in my mind, if I had to rate them, one through whatever, the number one book is Leadership in the Kingdom. I smell like sheep. Principal Center Leadership. I got these. If you're interested in these books and want to, to read them, uh, then let me know and I will share them with you. I would prefer that if you did, you say, take a week to say, I'm going to read it this week in case someone else may want to, to read them too. Not all readers are leaders. That makes sense to you? But according to the founding fathers of leadership, all leaders are readers. That might be a little bit hard, but I, I, I just think it's, I think it's good if we are readers, if we are, are searching, if we are, are expanding and growing. And I think it's important that if we are a reader. Uh, and going back to this, this is uh, what Ingersoll was talking about. So, let's see if we have time for... Okay, let me show you one. Uh, this is uh, Bolsinger on uh, the one who wrote Canoeing the Mountain, and this is what he says about leadership. I really do believe that, in one sense, people follow you for what they get out of it. I mean, we all have higher causes, and we want to be involved in things that are a little bigger than ourselves. But really, it's about that I want to be involved in something bigger than myself. So as a leader, if I can tap into your dreams and into your aspirations, to your sense of significance, and I can help you see that you're being part of something bigger than yourself will help you achieve your goals, um, then I think we can do something great together. But it really has to be modeled by the leader. If people think they're signing up for Todd's thing, they don't get nearly as much as if they think they're signing up for something that is really about us together forming. So leadership really is about how to get people to give you more than time, but give you their hearts, their creativity, their energy, to invest their, their whole heart and soul. I hope you can hear that. I got it as loud as it can go, at least how, as loud as I know. So that's, that's kind of where we are today. I, there's a couple more I wanted to show you. Uh, my goodness, Brene is misspelled up there. It's B-R-E-N-E. -E. So Brene Brown, uh, the first one is misspelled. Uh, but she has lots of good stuff, and I'm going to be showing stuff on Brene Brown quite a bit because she, it, she's, she's really good. Uh, Simon Sinek is another one. All these are from Simon Sinek. And another reason I say, if you want these, these are all links to the Internet of, this, of these clips. If you want that, tell me, and I will give you electronic copies of this so you can click these and go to these on the uh, Internet. So another thing that uh, on the back table back there, things that are uh, that you can pick up. 
This is something that was from Kirk Brothers that I got in the Heritage uh, Christian Workshop in March of 2019. He talks about umbrella con uh, con concepts of philosophies, integrity, humility, flexibility, and so forth. He talks about how Jesus showed this, how Paul showed this, and these are scriptures for it. I don't have time to go through all that. It's the reason I put it back there so that you can get it and pick it up and, and look at it if you're interested. Uh, and also, uh, there's another one that you might be interested in. Uh, Simon Sinek talks about the 10 rules of leadership. Break the rules, train your mind, be patient, take accountability, and so on. That sheet is back there as well if you're interested in that. So, I know we've, went, we've gone through this rather quickly and I uh, didn't get to show a couple of things I wanted to show, but I'll try to get them in later. I hope this class has met your needs. And again, please understand, if, if it has, tell other people, say, you can, you can really get some good stuff from this class. Or if, otherwise, if you say, yeah, I've been through all that. I can tell you, I've been through a lot of leadership classes, a lot of leadership training classes. And every time I go, I pick up some good new tidbits. And so I hope that you will do that in this class as well. Is there any questions or comments before we close? Jerry? Yes? Um, is your email on those sheets? Oh, no, it's not. That's a good, that's a, thank you for asking me. It's jerry at graymere.com. Jerry <coughs> at graybeard.com. Six, if you want to text me, 615-289-4945. But I prefer you, I prefer you uh, communicate with me one of these ways, because if you just verbally tell me, if I, if, I, I, may, not, I may not get it. But if you get it to me one of these ways, I will get it to you. Anything else? Thank you for being here this morning.